Prospect Plumbing Gang. Welcome to Plumbing with Tim. Today we're on location at a home that's for sale and is under contract to make some plumbing repairs. But especially I want to show you how to bring a hot water heater that's piped in copper up to code and install a thermal expansion tank. So let's go do it. All right, so I got my partner's inside and he's making some repairs to the toilet and stuff like that. Here's a hot water heater and I've already gotten started. But when I showed up here, it had been installed with sharp bite flex lines coming from this area up here and down to the top of the water heater. That ain't no good, we don't want that. Neither does the potential home buyer. All right, so as you can see, I've already taken the flexible lines off and we've done this in copper, all right? And I'll show you how I did this the proper way on another video because you never want to put heat on these nipples uh, because there's plastic parts in there and stuff. So but we're bringing this up to code and we're gonna tie the copper in with the existing copper lines. Uh, they didn't say anything about replacing the shutoff valve. Usually I put a ball valve in here, but it seems to be in very good working order, so we're not gonna mess with that. But I'm gonna show you how we tie this together and put a thermal expansion tank in. Now, as you can see, I've already put my risers and the nipples up and we've managed copper height between the two as well as over there. So we're gonna have to bridge this. Uh, we already put our couplings in there and everything's ready to go. So let's get some other fittings on there and then move on to uh, connecting this up the proper way uh, with an expansion tank. Now here in Florida, this is how code goes for everything these days. Over here on my right hand side is where the cold water inlet's coming in and the hot water. So this is the side that we're gonna wanna have the thermal expansion tank. So what I'm gonna end up doing it is using a T on this end, see that? And a 90 over on the hot end, that's gonna be returning back into the house and feeding the hot water. I showed you we gotta bridge these gaps, cold side. We've already got these desired height and we've gotten cleaned and scuffed with sand cloth. Next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put some flux just on the pipe, not the fittings. Just on the pipe. You don't need a whole lot. It's a very active ingredient and element when it comes to uh, soldering copper and everything. And what we're going to do usually, if this pipe was shorter and it was down here close to the nipple, I would take a rag and I would wrap it around this wet to dispense of any kind of heat when I put the torch on there. All right, so the next thing we want to do, this is how we're looking. This is the cold, and there's the hot. So I need to take a measurement between the two, where the hub is to the end of the hub. All right, which is gonna be right about six inches, looks like. And we'll come back after we make that cut and we'll measure the second one that goes back to the hot. Six inches, right about there. Nice and clean on both sides put our fittings. Four and a half. Okay. So now we've bridged our gap. 
on the hot and cold side, got T on that end, 90 on that end. <clears throat> Next thing we're gonna do is I had a leftover piece of copper about three inches and we're gonna end up putting this thing up top here on the T. We'll put some flux and stuff. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we have a female threaded adapter that's gonna sit on top of that. So let's get that all fluxed up and set in place and I'll show you what it looks like. That's how our copper is gonna get set up here. Cold inlet, hot outlet. The 90 and the T up there with a the female adapter. All right, so next thing we gotta do is solder those joints and get that all set and ready to go. Like I said, if these lines weren't so long and they were closer to the nipple, I'd be wrapping a wet towel around here to disperse the heat. But anyways, because I am going to be soldering, I always put a towel down on top of my water heater because the flux that drips and stuff, I don't want to have to wipe that up off the heater. So think smart, not hard. Now that the soldering is all done and stuff here, we want to first of all take a dry rag and wipe off all the excess flux. Anything that might have ran down the pipe or that's around the the joints and stuff. Be careful because it's still warm. Get all that flux off there. We don't want it to rot the pipe. All right. Now that we have those wiped off, take yourself a small inspection mirror like I got right here. Take a look back in the areas that you usually couldn't see. And make sure that your solder joints made it all the way around because we don't want to have to have a leak and come back and fix something that was avoidable. Those all look good. That looks good. Full penetration all the way around on every single one of the joints. That's good. So our next step is we're gonna let this sucker cool off. Then I'm gonna show you how to put an expansion hick on here. All right, so we're waiting a few minutes for the hot copper to cool off. Here's our new expansion tank. Come with different uh, sizes and different brands. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open that up and get it out of the box. So we got sprayed it for a 40 gallon water here or such and get it out of the box. Okay, there she is right there. It's an expansion tank. I'll go ahead and I'll show you what we have to do to get that thing prepped. My personal preference, and some of you plumbers out there might do things a little differently. So we start right here. We got the threaded nipple at the top. All right, I use Teflon tape. I want to make sure to put those the way that they're going to be threading onto the copper. All right, so as you're threading it, Teflon tape isn't coming off. See that? I'll go ahead and put that on. I'll go about four or five times around here. All right. Now that I have Teflon tape on there, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to use our Rector Seal 5 pipe dough. And we're going to put those on the threads, same direction. I'm making a little bit of a mess here. I'll clean it up. See that? Goop it on there real good because that's going to be your seal. Okay, so on our cold side, we put our T and our female threaded adapter. It's cool to the touch. Here's our expansion tank. I'm gonna flip this thing over. Nice and easy. Take your time. Don't cross thread it. And just screw it in there. Now, some guys think that you might need to get a wrench up here and stuff to tie that on and to tighten it. I've learned if you put some mass behind it, you can probably tighten the thing up really super snug. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with that, go ahead and put a wrench on there and get it snug the rest of the way up. That, my friend, is a finished product. And our thermal expansion tank that's sitting in here, it's new. All the solder joints are in. We didn't make a huge mess. Looks good. 
option before you get started doing any of this, whether it's an existing water heater and where you're replacing a water heater. So always go over to where your breaker panel is and cut the power off before you start, okay? No mistakes. So we got the green light and uh, my helper just went around the back of the house and he's getting ready to cut the water back on. And then we're gonna test our work, make sure we got no leaks, so I think we'll be good. Before I go ahead and turn the water back onto the water heater, we didn't drain the water heater. We just kind of opened up a valve in here and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here to this bathroom. We're going to cut on um, the spigot right here on the hot side and just leave it open. All right, and then we'll go out and we'll turn the water supply onto the heater and whatever air is in there will bleed it out through this faucet. Truth, let's go ahead and get this water cut on for the, the heater. There we go. I said we didn't drain this water heater so there shouldn't be a whole lot. We're testing for leaks though. Almost all the way on. Alright. Now see any kind of leaks happening. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and go back inside and shut that faucet off. All the air is out of line, go ahead and cut it off. There you guys go. The existing water heater brought up the code with an expansion tank. I have other videos you can go take a look and I'll tell you why you should have an expansion tank in your house. When it comes to insurance and stuff like that and new construction, they're required by code. Uh, if you run into one of these water heaters that doesn't have one of these tanks on it, probably because it's been in there since they issued it as being code here in the state of Florida. And if you're out there to work on a water heater, you want to go ahead and try to upgrade it with the customer so he or she or they have an expansion tank on their water heater. So there you guys have it. Thanks for hanging out and watch me show you how to install a thermal expansion tank on your water heater. Uh, they are code, like I said. Now, when I showed up here, uh, the water lines were flexible hoses with shark bites, and they would have never supported the weight of an expansion tank and stuff like that. Listen, if you got any questions or concerns or comments, please leave them down below. Share it with a friend. Give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, this has been Plumber with Tim. Keep plumbing.